you something here in the, in the Word of God. I feel like I was up in, uh, down in Georgia, down in Georgia. My phone wouldn't work or anywhere near the church, so if you tried to call me or text me, I didn't get them. Sorry, I didn't get it. Um, but we had a great time down there. I had about eight, eight or nine kids saved. Had a real good week, and we just got us ready for our big camp, July the 8th. But we'll look here in Joshua chapter 1 this morning. And the Lord made a statement to Joshua, and I want to preach about it this morning for all of our, our, our daddies. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Look what he told him. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. People say, all he does, read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. Yes, sir, that's exactly right. You're to meditate on this book day and night and night. You're not crazy cult fanatic to go around quoting scripture and meditating on the Bible. You're a normal Christian. If anybody ever gets normal nowadays, you have to backslide to fellowship with the rest of the church people. And that's sad. But he, he said this, look here, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then, after you do that, thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. If you listen to me a minute this morning, I'm going to preach on how to be a successful father. How to be a successful father. Now, I know there's all kinds of jokes about Father's Day. Um, one kid, one man, he's a grown boy, still living off his daddy, living at home. He's about 20 years old laying on the couch all day, and uh, wouldn't work. He said, I, I'd really give my dad what he wants for Father's Day this year, but I can't afford to move out. And, and that's, that's sad, but that's true in a lot of ways. And one father was really, really big, really, really big. And, but he identifies as skinny, and that's all that matters. All that matters is what you identify as, right? He's translender, that's what he is. And uh, uh, he, uh, he uh, that's the day we're living in, you know. Yeah, I'm Michael Jordan. Uh, but anyway, believe it or not, and you probably can believe it, the, the left-wing, liberal, unbelieving, Bible-hating groups in America have this year attacked Father's Day. Father's Day began July 9th. June 19, 1910, by a young lady named Serana Dodd. Her father was a single parent and raised six children by self. And she petitioned the government, done something, she wanted to do something special for her dad achieving something like that. That's something, I mean, you know, and I got, I got three kids, girls sitting over there this morning. All three of them's here. Thank the Lord for that. And now I've got three more, Ethan, Molly, and Frankie. And I've got Father's Day cards from Frankie even this morning. You'll, you'll see it. It's funny. His, if he can paint a bus, he can help, help uh, write, write a Father's Day card. And uh, he helped paint that bus yesterday. And so six kids, that's what that man had. And they honored him and began Father's Day after him. But let me tell you what the... the people in the, in, the, in the world are doing today, they, they're trying to blur the lines, mix everything together that's different. And they think if we take everything that's different and blend it together, the world won't have no problems. So they're trying to turn men womanly and woman, women manly, and it'll never work. Uh, in Spokane, uh, Washington, where this began, the liberals now are saying that Father's Day, listen to this, promotes gender stereotypes and toxic masculinity. And they say it's toxic for a man to say, I'm a man and I thank God for it and I'm proud of it. That's terrible. That's terrible. You, you, shouldn't, be, you shouldn't feel like that at all. As a matter of fact, they say that Father's Day should be abolished altogether. The Chicago Tribune made, had an article saying, Is Father's Day outmoded? Maybe we should just get rid of it all together. And, and they're also trying to say, this year, send your father flowers. 
Really, really. They're promoting it and showing, uh, send, send him a nice bouquet of flowers. Listen, y'all better not send me no flowers. You can put some on them dead if you want to, but I don't want to know it. Listen, get him a chainsaw, amen? Uh, give him a set of tools, a hammer and a saw, and, and uh, uh, something like that. It's not, it's not a hurting thing for a man to be masculine like it is for a woman to be feminine. There's nothing wrong with that. We're supposed to. Be glad you're what you are and thank God for it and be proud of it and thankful for what God made you. So I want to say a few things about how to be a successful father. All dads, listen up. This will help you. Uh, the first thing I want to say about a successful father is whatever he does will prosper. Whatever he does will prosper. This is in Psalm 1 and verse 2. The Bible said, Blessed is a man uh, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And it said, Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You, and, and you ever heard anybody say, Everything he touches turned to gold? That's the truth of, of a godly father. Have you ever noticed that some people, some men, just seem like they got God's blessings on them. It just seems like some people can just, anything they do is a success. That's not an accident. That's the blessing of God. It's got nothing to do with where you were come from or how you was raised or what your nationality is or what an income bracket you find yourself in. It's the blessing of God on a man's life that'll do right. Have you ever met know somebody and they just they just make a mess? I mean, you look back in their future, their past, and it's just a mess, a mess, a mess, a mess. Everything they touch turns into failure. There's a difference when the blessing of God is on a man's life. God uh, will bless you, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. If you start a business, it'll prosper. If you Buy a house, it'll, things will work out good. If you buy a car, and everybody has bad luck, but you know what I'm talking about. You want God to bless your business. You want God to bless your family. You want God to bless. The Bible said, if you'll do right, whatsoever you do will prosper. J.C. Penney, as a real man, you know, uh, when he was raised as a kid, and when J.C. Penney, the famous businessman, owned, a, owned one of the largest clothing whatever you call that kind of store, like Sears, Penny's is. Uh, um, I don't know if it's just clothes. It's got other stuff, lawnmowers and stuff, I reckon. I don't know. But uh, anyway, when he was, Ray, when he was growing up, um, he grew up on his daddy's farm. And J.C. Penny, as a young man, bought a hog and fed that hog and raised it and fattened it up and sold it and made money. He bought some more hogs and fattened them up and sold it and made more money. He bought some more hogs and people around would give him their scraps and stuff and he'd round up just a young boy. He already had that business mind in his head and he'd, and he'd work and his, the neighbors started complaining because the hogs squealed and made noise and they stunk and it was bad. And you know what J.C. Penney's daddy did? J.C. Penney's daddy said, sell them. And he said, no, Daddy, I'm making money. I can make a lot of money off this. He said, no, we're not going to do our neighbors like that. If we're bothering our neighbors, sell them. And he made him sell them pigs. And he didn't like it. Then he went to work for a man in a grocery store. When he was growing a little bit older, J.C. Penney went to work for a man in a grocery store. And he's, the, the owner of the store was taking, he would do stuff like take cheap coffee and mix it in with the real expensive coffee and sell it for expensive coffee and was therefore cheating people and making money off of it. And he went home and told his daddy and he thought it was sort of funny. He said, you know what he does? He said he puts the cheap stuff in with expensive stuff and sells it. And his daddy said, you quit tomorrow. He said, why? He said, I'm not going to let you work for a crooked businessman. And he made him quit that job. Or J.C. Penney may have wound up as a grocer. So he grew up all his life being taught by his daddy that you are honest and that if you treat people right, it'll come back to you. And look what happened. I mean, you can't argue with the results. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You got to watch out for people that's always wanting something for nothing. 
If you talk to anybody in prison, almost every one of them are in prison trying to get something for nothing. Something you didn't earn, something you didn't work for. So whatsoever a man does, that prosper. The only time success comes before work is in the dictionary, brother. In real life, it ain't like that. You get where you get by hard work and applying yourself and working hard. And I know we're living in 2019 and everybody said just get all you can get by hook or crook but the old way, God's way is still the right way. You Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord and God will bless an honest man like that. Number two, let me say secondly, fathers, he will excel, a successful father will excel in wisdom and understanding. In other words, a man that lives for God and is a godly father will have wisdom and understanding far beyond his years and peers. That means a man that will do right, serve God, and spend time in the Bible will be a lot smarter than other men his age. You ever heard somebody say, man, that guy wasn't but 25, doesn't this, wasn't but 30, doesn't that. Man told me one time in Marion, and I was 29, 28, 29 years old, and he, uh, a, a man came up to me and he said, Brother Danny, he said, uh, you're the pastor of the largest church in the county, and you're 29 years old. And uh, I said, yeah, God's been good to us, hasn't he? He said, how does that happen like that? And I said, I don't know. I don't know. Sure wasn't nothing I did. All I can say is the blessing of God. And God's what makes it prosper. God's what gives the increase. Mine and your job is do right. Mine and your job is serve the Lord. Do right and you will excel in wisdom. I got credit for a lot of things. I had no idea what I was doing. I had to come up against a decision. I'd say, well, I think we need to do this. <laughs> and it would turn out right. And, and it was, you know what that was? You got the edge. If you live right and let the Holy Spirit lead you, you got the edge in making decisions because God knows everything and you don't. If you try to make all these decisions without the Lord, you just hit and miss and win some, lose some. But it said, he, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen? That's right. Um, um, uh, living for the Lord is like shaving. No matter how smooth it you feel today, you still got to do it again tomorrow. Most of us. Some of you guys done gave up. I don't blame you. I can't grow a beard. Maybe I'd try it myself. Uh, but you know what? No matter how smooth you shave, you still need it again tomorrow. And it's the same way in living with the Lord. No matter how good I do today, I've got to get up and do it again tomorrow. Amen? He will excel in wisdom. Listen to this. Here's your good man. If you're able to have money without it having you, if you're able to bear the, the mistreatment without fighting back, if you're able to keep on a job till it's finished, if you're able to do your duty when nobody's looking, and if you're able to accept criticism without it stopping you or without it detouring you, you are a successful man and father. Amen? Yes, sir. You see, because God don't look at just how far you get. You know the Lord's a fair judge. He don't look at just how far you get. He looks at the obstacles you overcome in getting there. And now I'm telling you, brother, God looks at stuff like that, and God rewards you. He rules with wisdom. It may not always make sense. Uh, uh, some, some fathers have no wisdom, have no wisdom. And I, I feel sorry for you. Uh, some people have a father with no wisdom at all. Listen, a man that will live for God and serve God, for his kids and, and for God and then for his family too. He's got wisdom. He don't just fly off the handle. He don't, I heard a story one time, this, um, this woman had this little boy about that high and uh, he said he, he, she made him eat prunes and she had five prunes on his, ta on his plate and said, now you, you ain't going to play, you ain't going to do nothing to eat them five prunes. And he ate two of them. 
and he jumped up and ran around the house, and she went in there and she said, I'm telling you, buddy, you go upstairs in your room. God's not happy with you. He's, he's upset with you not eating your prunes. Now you get on up there in your room. And he moped up the steps, you know, moped up there and got in his room, got down, and crying in there. And a little bit, she started feeling guilty, you know. You know how you start feeling bad about fussing at them and you, and you want to check on them and everything. It come a big old lightning storm, thunder and lightning, Lord have mercy. And she told him God wasn't was mad at him and everything. And he was looking out that window like that, that thunder and lightning. And his mama oh, peeped in looking at her like that. About that time he said, You have to make such a fuss over three prunes. <laughs> I mean, he thought God's out there uh, doing all of that just because of him. And he wasn't. The Lord's a fair father. And that's the way a successful father is. He's fair with his children. He's fair with them. He don't just knock one of them's head off for nothing. He's fair. And I tell you something, you daddies in here know this. If you don't know it already, you will soon. Every one of your kids are different. And some, one that type of work, that what works with one may not work with another. So you have to ask God for wisdom to know how to deal with each one of your children. My girls over there, I can tell you, uh, I know I've had people tell me, say, I love it when you tell stories about y'all, the girls when they was little. And I can tell you, all three of them are different. All three of them are completely different different. They're all alike in so many ways. When Chris and Corey were just little, people thought they were twins. They said, uh, uh, they said, are them two twins? I said, nope, they're not. But they were, they were a lot alike, but a whole lot different. And, and we can, we can tell, you, tell stories all day long about how, that, how that, that they're so different. But you know something? I got down many, 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 many times. And you as a parent know what I'm talking about. There are things come up when you honestly do not know what to do. You thought, if I do this, I'm too strict. But if I do that, I'm too loose. If I let them go there, I feel like they might get in trouble. But if I don't, I feel like I'm going to box them in too much and they're going to rebel. Every parent that's got a brain goes through all them years where, how, how am I going to let them? Am I going to let them date? Am I going to let them do this? Am I going to let them go here? Am I going to let them go there? And you think, well, I'm not just going to raise them to please the other people, but I've got to raise them to please God. And I'm going to tell you what you need. You need wisdom and understanding that God alone gives through his word and living right. It's the only thing I can tell you. I am heartbroken this morning over people, men, who used to sit right here on these seats and today are out of church. Families, husbands and wives, they used to sit right there where you're sitting this morning and now both of them's out, of, out in sin. Little kids, listen, there's kids in trouble this morning in immorality because mama got on drugs that used to sit right here in this church. Mama got with the wrong crowd. Mama got backslid. Mama started taking pain pills. Mama winds up in trouble. Mama winds up in jail. Mama winds up, listen to me. You hear me, men. You hear me. There is not one sin, one pleasure that the devil's got to offer that's worth losing your kids to the devil for. You're a man. Stand up and be a man. Number three, he will have new power over sin. Psalm 119, 9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to thy word? He will not let sin rule his life. He realizes what a responsibility is here. Your kids are watching, men. Your kids are watching you. And they learn more by watching you than they do listening to you. Amen. Amen. They can tell it. They said uh, years ago, there's a preacher that had three boys. And one day, a dog showed up at, at their house. And they liked it. They fell in love with him. Daddy, can we keep it? Daddy, can we keep it? And it was a, a, a black dog, and it had about three or four white hairs in its tail. Unusual uh, looking like that. And they said, well, isn't that, isn't that something? Three, three little white hairs in his tail. And they said, Daddy, can we keep it? Daddy, can we? And he said, yeah. So they just adopted the dog. And they gave it a new name, and they petted it and brushed it and took care of it and everything. One day, they saw an advertisement in the paper they saw an advertisement in the paper that somebody had lost a dog. And they described it perfect. It had white, a few white hair in the tail. 
And uh, they saw that and they thought, "Uh uh-oh, my boy's done attached to this dog. Listen, men, my family done loves this dog. And that man took his, he's a preacher, and took his boys and they took that dog and they plucked them white hair out of that tail. And he said, just, let's, just, let's just get these white hairs out of there. Well, then somebody, one of the neighbors saw it, and the real owner showed up at their house. And the real owner said, hey, I heard y'all had a dog here that, uh, that, that might be mine. Can I see it? And he said, well, what does it look like? They said, well, it's black. He's this, 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 this. And he's got three black hair on him. And the daddy pulled him out and said, well, now we got one here. Uh, here he is. Uh, but he don't have no white hair in his tail. And the owner looked and said, no, no, he don't, and left. And you know what they said about that man? They said he kept the dog and lost his boys. Because their boys knew their daddy wasn't honest. He was a hypocrite. Listen, men, I know Christian men that let their kids go to a McDonald's and order, order a drink, and I just want water, and then take their drinks back and just put, and put Pepsi in it. You know what you're going to do? You're going to lose your kid's respect by doing, oh, it's just a drink, McDonald's can't afford it. it. It might be, but it's a bad example for a man to be dishonest in front of his kids. Lord, it's getting quiet in here, y'all. Uh, it's the truth. You know it's the truth. Listen, we were somewhere the other day, and we stopped at McDonald's, and, and, it, and it's, uh, it was a McDonald's where it had a convenience store made into it, you know, as a store and a McDonald's, where you just walked down one door into the other. And uh, I was walking around in there, and I had a drink from McDonald's, and I thought, I'll just walk over here in the store and get me a candy bar for dessert. So I walked out of McDonald's in the store, got me a candy bar, and thought, well, I ought to fill up my drink. And I started to fill up, and I said, wait a minute. I bought this drink over there. It'd be stealing to get that water or that drink out of the store, Pepsi. Oh, Brother Danny, you make such a bad. You know what the Bible said? The Bible said if a man's unjust in what's least, he's unjust in what's much. If you're a crook with $2, you're really a crook with a bunch of money. It does matter. Your kids are watching you. Amen? They are watching you. And don't you think for a second. I, like I said, like this one man said, he said, I ain't a model father. I'm not perfect. But I, when my boy gets old and people say he reminds them of me, I want him to stick out his chest, not his tongue. Say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, be a, be a man that has power over sin. Molly, when, we, when they first come to our house, we went to eat at a Golden Corral or somewhere. And she said, it was so funny, we was going to eat. And, uh, and uh, you know, they have age limits on there. And I said, uh, she said, we're going to eat here. And I, uh, they said, how old is she? I said, how old are you, Molly? She said, tell them I'm five. And I said, what? That's what she said. She said, tell them I'm five. I said, you're not five. She said, I know, but tell them I am, and I get free. I said, we can't do that. She said, no. I said, Molly, how old are you? She was six. She said, tell them I'm five. Now, listen, you raise a bunch of kids like that right there, they ain't going to have no confidence in you. You said, oh, we just save a little money. It ain't no big deal. They grow up thinking... My daddy's a crook. He stole my food from Golden Crow. Now, is it tempting? Yes, it is. A six-year-old don't eat a half a plate full. Lord, you feel like, bless God, they charge too much for us anyway. You know, you know and you think like that. But if you're going you're gonna to set the right example for your kid, you've got to be honest to the T. If they see you cheating people, it's a bad, listen, if they, you can't, my daddy used to go in there and he'd keep liquor under the kitchen sink, claimed it was his medicine. It wasn't his medicine, it was his sickness. He'd reach under there every night before he'd go to bed, and I remember I was little, I'd go in there, and he'd pull that in there, and, and he'd take a big swig of it, help him sleep, you know. Every drunk has one excuse or another. I need something to help me sleep, like all you drug addicts. 
And he go, I remember thinking, well, if it tastes that bad, why you drink it? Uh, I don't think it's helping you none. That's a bad example. Look, if you don't want him to drink, you don't drink. You don't want them to smoke weed, you don't smoke it. Amen. Have power over sin. And finally, last, and I'll be done. My daddy did quit drinking before he, before he, when he got saved. He quit drinking 10 years before he died. What a blessing that was. What a blessing that was. And you can too, fella. You can quit. And you can quit. And you should quit. It would save you a lot of money and gain you a lot of respect. Number four, and I'm through. His success will be obvious to all. The Bible said in 1 Timothy 4.15 that thy profiting may appear to all. Did you know if a man lives right, everybody who knows him say, well, there's one thing about it. God sure has blessed that guy. His, his success will be obvious to all. I, I know a preacher up in Michigan named uh, Don Green, Lansing, Michigan. Dr. Don Green, I never did know Dr. Green that good, but I know some of his boys. Tim Green, who's a preacher, he's an evangelist. I used to, he had preached for us and I preached with him down in Pensacola at Rockman's Church many, many years ago. Don Green got saved when he was nine years old. He started preaching when he was 16. Went to Bible school out in Fort Worth, Texas and preached the King James Bible just like it is for 60 years. He actually made a Christian Baptist flag that's went around the world. He has five sons. All of his sons are preachers. He has one daughter, had one daughter. She married a Baptist missionary and served in Papua New Guinea on the mission field for 25 years before she died of cancer just a few years ago. His daddy was a preacher. His sister married a preacher. And he lives, he leaves behind him a legacy of serving God, doing right, church attendance, Bible reading, and his prosperity is known to all. You can say whatever you want to, but it's hard to argue with a testimony like that right there. The man lived right, served God 60 years, and all six of his kids in full-time ministry and service for the Lord. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Joshua was like that. David was like that. Jonah was like that. And all these men had their problems. Jonah backslid, David backslid, but every one of them left a fruitful life behind them and served God. I said that to say this. It don't matter how much you've messed up in your past. You can start all over today, sow good seed in the garden, start being the man you need to be for your family and God will make you a successful father. Let's stand together with our heads bowed. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. I preached today on the subject how to be a successful father. How to be a successful father. While she plays softly this morning, we'll not have any singing, just a few minutes. Will there be a dad here today? Brother Danny, man, I want to be that kind of man. I want to be able, people look at me and say, whatsoever he does, he'll prosper. I'm going to get my life right with God. I'm going to do what I need to do. It ain't easy. It's easy, everybody do it. Take your stand here this morning, friend. Let's get in this altar and pray a little bit. Any, you men, come on, let's get in this altar pray this morning. God, make me the father. Make me the example. You know, your, your kids are going to go to church about as regular as you go to church. Your kids are going to give about like you give. Your kids are going to talk about like you talk. Your kids are going to act about like you act, daddy, especially like father, like son. Let's get into others, others, others need to come. We're not going to have a long invitation. Let's just get in this altar this morning. Say, God, make me the, the daddy that I need to be. Amen. Amen. That's right. Others, others, come on. Others, come on.
Amen. Amen. We're going to pray this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit of God, come down here and do a great and mighty work here this morning. I thank you for all of these precious dads that are here today. All these up here a while ago. I pray you bless every single one of them. Do what needs to be done in every heart, every life here this morning. Touch every life, dear Lord Jesus. Save families, save marriages, save kids. Help every one of us to be the dad you'd have us to be and be like you. And we'll thank you for it. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm still praying this morning. Amen. Amen.